Hey, everybody, this is Chris and Kathy from Petability Podcast. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate every listener and are grateful for this platform. Please help us share our vision by subscribing to Petability Podcast through your favorite streaming app. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Petability Podcast and share our content on social media. You can also support the show by making a donation. Simply go to our website at petabilitypodcast.buzzsprout.com and click on the heart symbol at the top of the page. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Good morning, Chris. I'm doing fantastic today. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Good. Hey, uh, you know, I was so thrilled that you were excited when I proposed that we talk to the women of Heads Up Pets Water Collars who we have as our guest today. Yes, yes. Um, The more I researched it, Chris, and the more I looked at their website, and I I just was thinking, this is so imperative. We really need to talk about um, our pet safety around water. Right. And we haven't featured a product in in a while. When we started this podcast, you know, we were trying to get the word out there about particularly rehabilitation products, but things that help pet owners, right, to to manage their pets, you know, whether it's mobility or, you know, in this case, you know, like you said, safety, survival, and so forth. And I kind of stumbled upon this product. So I'm really thrilled to, you know, help them get the word out because we're all coming from, from the same place, you know, in, in terms of being animal lovers and, and so forth. Uh, I, I have a client, uh, the patient's name is Fresco and he ended up getting hurt worse than, than they originally thought. So he went to emergency, got an x-ray. They knew that he had a bite wound in his left forelimb uh, and, a, and a fracture. Um, he was splinted, and but he just wasn't using that leg well. And so many m- weeks or months later, they found out that he'd actually dislocated his elbow too. Oh. But now it's springtime and every day the dogs go swimming. Uh, They're all competitors. They're show dogs. They're agility national champions. Uh, She does a great job of keeping them in shape and they all love to swim. But she was worried about Fresco swimming because, you know, that leg just wasn't sound. And so we talked about, you know, life vests, but I thought, oh, maybe they might be a little bit prohibitive in terms of his motion at the shoulder. And we wanted him to be able to actually use the leg therapeutically because I thought this is going to be a great tool, right? Swimming, forcing him to, to kick equally with that left front limb and build up more strength, range of motion, et cetera. So I had recommended to Joan just the blue inflatable collar that we use that's kind of a substitute for the Elizabethan collar so dogs don't, you know, get out their wounds and things. And she found the heads up. And she goes, is this what you were talking about? And I'm like, no, but this is even better. <laughs> so I I looked into it. Um, I saw videos, which we'll, you know, post on our social media of, of Freshy Swimming this past summer. And she loved the product. I love the product. And Joan says, you have got to reach out to this women-owned company, which we love as well. Always want to support small business, women entrepreneurs, and, you know, get them to tell your story. And so here we are. So, Lynn, I know that you are the founder of this company and, you know, kind of the brainchild behind the product. And uh, it was it was a labor of necessity and love. Can you tell us the story and how this came to be? Yes, I can. We had a little um, Jack Russell 
and we had just moved to a new house and had a pool, which we never had had before. And she absolutely loved to play around the pool, but she would reach over into the pool to pick up a ball and she would fall in about half the time. Oh, no. <laughs> and we tried hard to, to teach her where the steps were, and we just were not sure that she ever really figured that out. But um, I told my husband, David, I said, you know, I've got to get something. I don't want a life jacket because I don't think they can really save her. And um, so I fashioned this strange collar and put it on her, and we could not believe the difference in her swimming. She, you know, her head was above the water, she right. was playing, and uh, so it, that's where it began, and um, we have come a long way from that strange little collar that I made to mm -hmm. what it is today. Yes, yes, and her name was Katie, right? Right. And she, as I understand, she grew to be, to be 18 years old. Um, Kathy, pardon us, was actually excited when she learned that Katie had, had gone blind because that's Kathy's jam. She's a blind dog expert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, again, another reason, right? Like if there's an unsighted dog that, may, that doesn't necessarily know where the edge of the pool is. Exactly. And, exactly. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, there'd be another mm -hmm. indication for it. But you know, I saw it in, in all the years that I swam dogs for rehabilitation. And it, if these dogs weren't skilled at swimming or even if they were, you know, if I happen to throw the ball out of the pool, you know, they're uh -huh. clamoring at the side. It's a vertical wall or sometimes it even has, you know, kind of an underlip. So so it just is mechanically almost impossible for right. a dog to to extricate itself from the pool. And it's heartbreaking. When you're seeing them struggle against that pool wall. And Chris, the other thing I think that it's important to to dispel this myth that all dogs are natural swimmers as well, because right. that's not necessarily tr true that's either. Right. You know, if you think about the different kinds of body designs of dogs, and so sure, some dogs are really designed for swimming. You see those Labradors with their webbed feet, and they're, they're designed for swimming, but your, your top-heavy dogs, your greyhounds, your pugs, your bulldogs – they're not really good swimmers. And sometimes your labs aren't good swimmers. Sometimes they need to be taught as well. So not all dogs right. naturally know how to swim. That's right. And when they fall into the pool, you mentioned the side of the pool. When they fall in and get disoriented, they just turn right around and try to get out exactly of where they fell in. That's so right. they swim against yeah. the wall and they just swim for, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes, they say. Wow. And, and they just die. Wow, that's awful. You know, I I was um, in contact with a friend of mine last night who's a veterinarian who specializes in emergency medicine, and we were talking about this about your product, the Heads Up uh, Water Collar, because we were both very excited about it as a veterinarian and veterinary technician. Um, we thought that this was a great product, but I had to look and see. We both had to look and see if there were any statistics, anything on how many dogs per year drowned in pools. You know, and there wasn't a, a real, um, there wasn't a real number. There wasn't a confirmed number, but um, some sources are estimating up to 5,000 dogs will drown in a year in a pool. And I thought that number was way too high. Right. Exactly. And that doesn't count the dogs that are uh, in lakes, ponds, streams, right. ocean, um, you know, in the middle of the ocean, falling off boats. So it's... It's, we've estimated it's a lot higher than 5,000. I think that, you know, people also need to know, you're right. I, I, when I, as a veterinary technician, I wouldn't necessarily see the dog that, that drowned because they didn't make it to the hospital. Right. But it's also imperative that we talk to owners about near drowning experiences for these dogs as well, because these dogs um, who have near drowning experiences can have follow-up things or secondary things that happen from the near drowning that might not show up for 24 to 48 hours after their near drowning experience. Right. So things like pulmonary edema, uh, things like aspiration pneumonia, um, and those can also be fatal. So it's really important for people to understand that even if their dog has had a near drowning experience and they're like, oh, good, my dog is okay. No, you still need to go to the veterinarian. You do. And then there's post-stressed 
there's like a PTSD situation and the dog will not want to go water, get, you know, near water again. And if you have a pool, that can be a problem. Um, if you're, if you want to take your dog out and experience life and go to the lake or go to the ocean, you know, if, if they've had a near drowning experience, that's going to be a, a, a it's going to be a, a tough ladder to climb. So um, terrifying. Yeah. Exactly. They're terrified. So we know that that Lynn was the brainchild. Uh, Kelly, can you tell us how did you get involved with um, with the Heads Up Water Collar? I'd love to. It was one of the best days of my life. Um, I, I got a new friend and a business, and um, I went to one of the large dog shows here in Houston, and uh, I was I designed um, dog furniture and um, for a, a company here in Texas, and I was there showing my dog furniture in one of the rescue booths that had invited me to come and, and show my stuff. And um, I took, you know, I took a break and I was walking around with, um, actually, I was by myself that day. It was the first day. And I walked into over to Lynn's booth and there she was selling her little water collars. And um, I don't think she was in the booth at the time. And I picked him up and I looked at him and I came back later and she was there. We started talking and I immediately bought three for my, for my three dogs. Um, I, we don't even have a pool. <laughs> and I, I said, this is so brilliant. And I, then I, I said, why, why don't you have a licensing agreement for this product with, you know, one of these great big box stores. And she said, I'm not sure I know what that is. And I said, hi, my name is Kelly Minson and I'm your new best friend. <laughs> um, and so my, my goal for this and, and for Lynn is, is to, you know, take it to the next level. And so I said, I'm going to go to work for you for free and I'm going to help you increase your sales and we're going to get you noticed. And, um, we have, we have been pitching this thing. Listen, the bottom line is this is a very demonstrative, product and just you know just hanging on a hook in a store is probably um you know you're gonna sell some but you need to know why this is a good product and i i immediately saw it you know it's the dogs don't drown because they don't know how to swim they drown from exhaustion and um i, I it was just so brilliant and i just i couldn't i couldn't leave the booth without getting involved you're here. Smart. I said, Smart. thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe there's a, I believe that there's a higher power at work here and he brings people together for a reason. And you know, one of the reasons that, you know, Lynn and I have an alternate email address um, and website address just for heads up pets. And it's called save dogs from drowning.com. And it's because it's easy to remember, you know, who doesn't want to save their dog from drowning? And, um, you know, because of the way we spell the name of the product, which is H-E-D-Z-U-P-P-E-T-S, um, some people will go and look at under H-E-A-D. And so, you know, we, we were brainstorming one day and I said, you know, I, I don't know who's thought of it, but Lynn said, let's just do save dogs. And I said, how about save dogs from drowning? <laughs> and, um, and it's long, but it works and people yeah. remember it. And right. I, I see people all the time um, in those big box pet stores. We won't mention the names um, because they don't buy our product yet. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I, if I take my dog out, he's got his water collar on and uh, we could be in there to buy, you know, cookie bones. And I take him in and people will stop me and say, what is that? And I launch into my sales pitch and mm -hmm. um my husband calls me P.T. Barnum in a skirt, and I never miss an opportunity <laughs> just to tell people, you know, if you can't remember Heads Up Pets, just go to SaveDogsFromDrowning.com. And believe it or not, that's how we get a lot of sales. Mm. It's easy to remember. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I think, I, brilliant. Brilliant. And, you know, obviously both of you are, are – very passionate uh, about this product and for good reason. And, you know, they always say two minds are better than one. And, and so now we want to be on, on team heads up and save dogs from drowning. Thank you. We'd love to have you. We'd love to help. <laughs> so Lynn, back to you. Can you describe, because we've talked about it, but we haven't talked about the details. Can you describe what this water collar is and what makes it unique? Well, of course the, the, Main thing is that it that your dog can't drown with it on. Um, it's it has a foam center, 
and it's covered in cotton fabric. Um, and it comes in 11 different sizes. We also have a size uh, or, or a collar for dogs with medical issues. We have um, dogs have, that have seizures. Um, it, laryngeal paralysis is one of the issues that we hear about a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the, the dogs that have not had, or, excuse me, that have had surgery, at, it's called a tie back surgery, um, which basically leaves their throat open. And if they get water down their throat, it goes straight to their lungs and they can drown. Mm -hmm. So the Heads Up Pets water collar has come in very handy for a lot of dogs that have laryngeal paralysis. Um, there are some people that still are a little uncomfortable and a little afraid of using it, but they're trying it and, and loving it. So, and then of course there's arthritis uh, when a dog is aging um, and any kind of hindquarter issues that it, uh, you know, they, they use the water collar and they get the exercise that you were talking about, Chris. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, that's. Yeah. And there are tons of uses and I, and I, I want to get into to that uh, down the road, but as Kelly alluded uh you know, you sent me a sample. And uh -huh. when you look at this online, you really can't appreciate its design. My first impression was, oh, my gosh, it weighs nothing. Right. It exactly. is so lightweight. So it looks bulky, right? But it's really not. I mean, I have two Cavaliers, as we know, mm -hmm. that are about 12 pounds. And I put it on them. and. It was, you know, no big deal. Certainly didn't weigh their head down. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they, they seem to, you know, find it quite comfortable for that reason. And so, you know, first is the weightlessness. Second is, you know, it's soft. Thirdly, mm -hmm. I know working with water in rehab, you know, it tends to be one of our, our tools that, that we go to when we have that ability. But, uh -huh. you know, one of the issues is, you know, I, I would have dogs, well, we all have had dogs that have incontinence issues. And mm -hmm. so, you know, finding a diaper, for example, that we could put on a dog that wouldn't imbibe water. So I used uh -huh. toddler little swimmers because it's similar in that the water does not soak into the material and create all this excess weight right? Uh -huh. and yours is a closed cell foam. So the water does not penetrate as I understand it and cause right. any more weight when the dog does get wet. That's right. That's right. Right. And it comes in, you talked about the foam core and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's several sizes from like one inch uh, in diameter to four inches. Is that true? That's right. Yes, that's right. So based on the size of the dog, you mentioned 11 sizes. Um, I read on your website from two pounds. I can't imagine a two pound anything swimming from two pounds to 220 pounds. You that's can accommodate. Right. That's right. Yeah. Amazing. Our largest collar looks like a tire. And <laughs> And but I bet still weighs next to nothing, correct? Correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. It um, weighs, actually, it weighs 12 ounces. The biggest one? Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, my. See? Amazing. Perfect. I know. <laughs> and and you got and 12 ounces. You have to keep in mind, you're putting that on a 220-pound dog. So exactly. Again, exactly. And we've, we've, we've got some really cute pictures of a lady who owns a gigantic D Bordeaux. And... She got she got her in the pool, and after swimming, she got so relaxed she fell asleep in the water collar. And I've posted that picture <laughs> several times oh. on. And she's just snoozing away in the water with her nose and her ears perfectly up out of the water like they're supposed to be, and she's completely asleep. And Kelly, it's a neck pillow too. When you're done swimming, you get uh, use it. You know, it's a little bit of a yes, neck pillow. Listen, I, I, you know, we're talking about uses. I have put this. On my dogs for long trips. If I drive to Oklahoma to see my dad, um, right. and, and it's they use it like an airline pillow in the car. It helps them get really comfortable. Um, nice. And um, I've, oh gosh, I've I've given these to people who or sold these to people who have dogs that dig. 
Um, they can't keep them from digging. And they for, the dog forgets to dig the hole big enough for the water column. <laughs> and um, we've used it on little bitty dogs as puppy bumpers so that the little tiny puppies and chihuahua, things like chihuahuas um, can't get through wrought iron gates. Um, you know, mm. they, they, yeah. Um, so people, many applications. Yeah. People use it after surgery um, instead of the cone. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does. It has. It just has multiple uses. Um, I've put mine on my little um, rescue Shizu uh, during a storm. It kind of it, because it it comforts her. Mm. Nice. Yeah. 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 And I'm thinking even you know like that support for for dogs that um, may have some neck pain, some uh, disc issues, arthritis. Um, you know, again, just keeping like all of the commercials for beds, right? It's all about like keeping your alignment, you know, so you yeah. don't get all twisted and torqued. And so if it just kind of fills that that gap in their neck and and gives them that support and keeps them from, you know, maybe falling asleep and in in, with their you know head hanging over the edge of the bed or something like that, which obviously would be uncomfortable and protect those joints and those discs. It's just like you said, the list goes on and on. And it's lightweight. So for those dogs that have discs or have pain in their neck, um, it doesn't, the biggest one weighs 12 ounces. It's, right. you know, it's right. very lightweight. Well, we're, listen, guys, we're so proud of this product. I mean, Lynn was a genius inventing it. And I, I just, yeah, you see why I joined the yeah. company with her. She just, uh, it, it's saving a lives. product. And, yeah. and once people get it, they get it, yeah. uh, so to speak. You know what, Chris, we are so impressed by this innovative collar to save dogs from drowning that we asked Lynn and Kelly if we could be a part of their team. And they so graciously said yes. So if you use the discount code PETPOD22, that's P-E-T-P-O-D 22 in capital letters, when you order your heads up water collar, you will receive a 10% discount. And a portion of each collar sold with the promo code PETPOD22 will help to support our show. It's a win-win. Not only do you get a discount, but you will help us to continue to get the word out there about awesome products like the Heads Up Water Collar and information to help pets live their best lives. Kelly, can you speak a little bit about how we would introduce our dog to wearing uh, the collar? Um, Chris and I always talk about, you know, setting the scene for success and and getting buy-in from dogs. Um, how would you, how do you put it on? Do you put it on when the, the dog, before the dog goes in the water? Yeah. Um, on the land? Okay. Yeah. I, we, I, and I like to recommend that um, you put it on your dog, let them get comfortable with it on dry land for a couple of days, you know, let them wear it around the house. And, you know, so they figure out it's not going to hurt them. It's not a foreign body. Um, and you're not introducing two new things at once, the pool and the collar. So, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, the Heads Up Pets water collar goes on using your dog's own collar. So if your dog's collar fits correctly, meaning that you can put one finger between your dog and the collar and pull it forward and it does not come over their head, then you're ready to put your collar into the water collar. So the black straps that are that go around our collar are what hold it on your on your dog's collar you you open up the velcro strap so it's you know in a in a linear line you run your dog's water collar through the straps you then take it to your dog's neck fasten your dog's collar and then you close the velcro strap to close the water collar and and it's on um and uh, you know, look, if, if you've got a dog that's really skittish of new things or new environments, I'd say throw the water collar, you know, on the floor for a couple of days, let them look at it and sniff it, then put it on your dog and let them wear it around the house um, and get truly comfortable. I mean, play some games, toss a ball, you know, and they figure out it's not going to weigh anything. It, it's not going to hurt them. Um, then you get to the pool um, and. There's a video of me on um, uh, our website Mm -hmm. and on Facebook of me taking my dog, Woody, into the water for the very first time. Um, And I made it a game. You know, he loves the ball. So I just, you know, I put the ball in the water with me and let him walk down the steps. And that was important. I wanted him to know where the steps were. And, um, you know, and he followed me around in the pool um, and he just floated like a little cork, 
So, <laughs> um, you, do, you know, you don't want to traumatize them if they're not ready. If they want to sit on the top step for a few minutes, let them sit on the top step, but make it fun. Um, right. You know, take a, a non, you know, um, something that they love, uh, you know, that's, you know, that could go into the water, um, you know, with you. Um, make it as comfortable as you can. That's um, that's the best advice I can give about, mm-hmm. you know, taking them for the first time. Always, always, always lead them to the steps uh, when they're done. Just make sure that your dog, you know, even though we know they're not going to drown in our water collar, you want your dog to know where the steps are. Right. And they're just comforted by having that terra firma. So having, you know, something solid under their feet, once they realize where that is, Mm -hmm. gravitate to it. Right. Back to Lynn's original story. The dog falls in. It has no idea that there's anywhere in that pool that they can touch down. So, you know, that's a key point that you introduce them on the steps to the water because Mm -hmm. that's where they're going to go back to. Um, The other thing I just really want to emphasize, and I want to make sure our our listeners heard this, is that you use your dog's own collar. You cannot take a shortcut by just Velcroing this on your pet. Correct. These ladies have it plastered all over their materials, whether it's online or when you get the collar. Um, and that your dog's own collar has to be an appropriate fit. And if you don't have a collar that you want to get wet, they geniusly have one that they can sell you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of people like to use dog life vests for one reason, because they have a handle on the back and, you know, they can reach down from their boat and plop their dog, you know, back up. It's a, you know, basically it's a shortcut um, to getting your dog back on dry land is that handle on the back. Um, A a life, you know, a life vest um, won't necessarily save your dog's life. And, um, and we, you know, we have, if, if somebody just generally says, I don't want to use a water collar because I want that, I want to be able to grab my dog. Well, we sell a harness or we have a harness, um, that we're, that we're going to add to our, um, our website, um, called an easy sport harness. Um, and it's, it doesn't cover the dog like a huge foam life vest does. It's just a, basically you're strapping a handle onto the dog. Um, so if, you know, if you are weary of, of trying a water collar because it doesn't have a handle on the back, we've got a fix for that too. Right. Right. And, and I just want to interject here that I am not anti-life vests personally, because I needed those again in rehabilitation. I mean, Kathy and I could vouch for this, you know, we were swimming dogs that, you know, are 16 years old and, you know, we need to be able to guide them. We need to be able to have that support, you know, for their whole body, because maybe they have neurological issues or they have, you know, just riddle with arthritis or generally weak or deconditioned because they've been ill. And so, you know, we want to give them that help, but as you said, with your your handle that you're adding to your website, it's not that these two things can't even be used in tandem. They certainly can. Yeah, We have rehabbers that use them and physical therapists that use life vests along with the water collar uh, simply for the added. uh, I think in, especially in rehab, it makes dogs feel more comfortable, like they're getting a hug. Oh, Uh, I wish I had this years ago. Yeah. I can't tell you how many, I can't tell you how many dogs will push their head under the water if they don't know how to swim. Right. That was, that's a goat they push under. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, you know, but the, um, the little dogs that we have just started working with, the, the ones without front legs, um, you know, uh, the water collar is definitely buoyant enough to keep their, you know, their front end up. But, you know, with some of the little dogs and maybe um, some of the larger dogs, they're going to need that extra stability of a, of a vest for a while until their back legs get strong enough to propel right. them through the water. So, yes, absolutely. You can be used in conjunction with a life vest um, all day long. Um, it's not it's not how we want to see them end up ultimately, you know, we'd like to see them, you know, strong enough to, to just use the water collar, but we'll take whatever we can get at this point. We just want the dog safe from drowning. I, I think about the life vest for people and the way that that works. You know, if we get tired from swimming, we can stop, we're vertical and we can tread water, right? And that keeps our head from going underwater. 
But that's not what happens with dogs in life fest. You know, if they start to go down into that sort of vertical position where their butt's floating down, it's not going to keep their head above water. Right. Um, so I think that's why it's so imperative to have the head, the water collar. So maybe, yeah, the, the, the life vest gives you a little bit of extra flotation. It's not necessarily going to keep you from getting uh, your head underwater or getting exhausted from swimming, right? Um, that could still happen. So, Kelly, um, I'm interested, I see on your website that you also say that you can use the heads-up collar as an effective teaching tool. Can you elaborate on that? Um, is, is it helping us to teach our dogs how to swim? Or what's what's the teaching Correct. part of it? Yeah, what, and giving them confidence in the water to learn the exits. Um, you know, just you hit it on the head just it's a you know a teaching tool a lot of dogs are just not natural swimmers right. um um i i just uh you know i love the the de bordeaux um you know these great big huge lumbering dogs and in the summer they're hot they want to get in the water and you know why let them just sit on the step teach them that the water can be safe for them mm -hmm. um you know and but Again, do it safely. Um, put the heads up pets water collar on them and, you know, gently guide them into the water. Um, it, it, it's just, um, it's giving them a level of comfort to know that they're strong enough to get in and out of the pool on their own. But well, it's like Lynn said, you know, when they fall in, you know, they want, they go immediately back to the wall. So the, the whole idea of the water collar is, you know, teaching them to, you know, put on the water collar and teaching them to go in on the steps. Um, but, you know, if they do fall in, once they've got that water collar on, they're, you know, their nose and ears are not going to go below the water. They're not going to have that sense of panic. I'd like to um, touch back again on on uh, confidence. You know, and, and Chris and I talk about uh, dogs and our confidence, their confidence all the time. And, you know, people are like, well, why should I be concerned with my dog's confidence? Well, we should be concerned with our dog's confidence. Confidence gives these dogs choices. Um, confidence gives you choices. So if you're um, a dog that's afraid to walk on slippery floors, um, you're not going to go into the kitchen, you know, until you get your toe grips on and then you don't slip. Right. And um, if you have confidence in the pool, um, that you know how to swim and you know where the edge is and that gives you a choice. You can get out. You know how to get out. You've done this before. Um, and, and I think that that's a really important key factor here is that, that confidence gives our dogs the ability to have these choices. And you're talking about um, at using the, co the collar as a teaching tool. When you have puppies that you are trying to swim, that's the best time to use uh, the water collar for them mm -hmm. because they, they start swimming knowing their head's going to stay up. Yeah, right, right. Confidence. And it's a positive experience. <laughs> so, Lynn, can you describe a little bit more about you know how how the water collar is different from a life vest? I know when we talked on the phone um, a few months ago, you had some key points. Well, the difference, the main difference is that a life vest will hold the dogs back, basically, up at, at the top of the water. And his head is, it's up to him to hold it up. Uh, some life vests have, have a little flap, but it's nothing that will really, really hold the dog's head up, especially since he is being held in a prone position. Um, so... With the water collar, of course, his back end can uh, go down a little bit in the water and his nose goes up, even if he is unconscious. Um, he just simply hangs in the water until you find him. That would be in a pool or in a, a boat accident or, or whatever. But that I'd say that's the main difference between the life vest and the water collar. And if I could just interject, let's let's say you're out in a in a lake and your dog accidentally falls off your boat and gets hit by a, a skier passing by. Or let's say he's out there already swimming and somebody comes too close skiing and hits your dog. Now your dog's unconscious. Mm -hmm. um, in a life vest, that dog's nose and ears are down in the water until you can turn your boat around and get back to your dog. And it's probably going to be too late. Um in a heads up pet's water collar, he's going to be floating with his nose and his ears up out of the water 
still unconscious, but the dog's breathing. And Mm -hmm. that's That's the difference in the life vest and the water collar. I learned that, you know, we call the doggy paddle, you know, when we learn that as people, the doggy paddle, because it's, it's all our arms, right? And so dogs tend to swim much more with their front legs than their back legs, just naturally. Uh And it kind of acts like an egg beater and, and, you know, and that front end, you know, raises up their rear end goes down. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times in a life vest, because they do have more uh, support caudally toward their rear end, that almost perpetuates that even more versus having a balance between front end and hind end. So when you're teaching a dog to swim with your water collar, because their rear end isn't supported, they naturally have to learn to kick more with their hind legs. That would be my, my guess. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a great thing because all dogs tend to get weaker in their hind end over time. You know, if there's no injury or medical factor that's influencing it, it's just based on how dogs are built and being quadruped that they tend to get weaker in their hind. So anything that we can do to maintain that range of motion, create joint health through movement of the joints and build up that strength and endurance in the hind is going to be a great asset. You know what, Chris, the other thing that um, you have to consider about life vests is size. People don't always get the size of their life vest mm. correctly, um, and it doesn't always fit appropriately. Where the water collar is going to fit appropriately because it's going through your dog's collar, so we know it's going to fit. And what happens sometimes is that dogs will actually get their front foot through the front part of that vest, and oh, now yeah, they're the neck hung hole. Up. The neck hole, yeah, and that will and that will hang them up, um, you know, because they can't move their legs. So if it doesn't fit appropriately, they can actually get that foot through the neck hole, and and that becomes problematic. So, um, so again, I think that you know using these two things in conjunction is great, but also sizing of of the life vest is imperative. It's really important because dogs can, um, they can they can wiggle out of it and they can get their front foot through it. Exactly, and Lynn does a lot of custom sizing on the you know, on the telephone. We've you know if. She's she's done this for so long, and and it can be confusing because we do have eleven sizes. But mm-hmm. we we answer the telephone when you call, uh, and right. and if if Lynn gets an order and she looks at the neck size of the dog and the dog's weight, which are the two things that you need in order to to place an order, she'll she'll if she questions it, she'll pick up the phone and call the customer before she ships and she'll say, you know what, what kind of dog is this? And, you know, and is he a good swimmer? And she asks all the right questions and mm-hmm. we try and get a custom fit, to, you know, to every dog um, that we send a water collar to because it is important. Um, if, you know, if we get out there and they say, well, it just doesn't seem to be doing, Lynn says, you know what, let's exchange it. Let's get him, let's get her a bigger collar, um, yeah. you know, or a smaller collar. But we, we do it until it's right. And I think, ladies, that that dogs can still fetch easily in your collar, correct? There's no... So easily, yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Does not inhibit them by any means. Yeah, we've got we've got videos of bulldogs diving off the back of, of boats into the water and they just pop right back up. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> most of the time you see a dog dive a bulldog dive off a, a boat, it, they sink like a rock. Yeah, um, right. And um the little dogs that you'd never think that you'd see in the water like little French bulldogs because they're the brachiocephalic dogs, with, you know, they have no mm-hmm. they have no nose. Um and the little flat faces that a lot of these dogs are afraid to get a drink of water, much less swim. And we've had so much success with the French bulldog breeds. Um, That's awesome. So, Kelly, I'd like to get your thoughts on the applications for this product, because in my mind is just swimming <laughs> with the possibilities. You know, as a rehabber, I'm thinking, um, Oh, I wish I had this product available to me a couple of years ago when I was using lap pools for dogs that have problems like degenerative myelopathy. So these dogs don't have full control over their bodies and they need to be able to keep their heads above the water. Dogs that have had strokes. Um, and, and of course, uh, I have an affinity for, for blind dogs. And um, this is perfect for blind dogs. Your blind dog could, and I always tell people to be careful around the pools, but your blind dog could very easily fall into the pool if you're around 
um, if they're around the pool and out there with you. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the applications that we can use this collar for. Well, just picking up where you left off, my next thought is uh, amputees. Um, we, right. When I first joined Lynn's um, company, um, we I, I was on Facebook, uh, just Facebook, 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 just joining every group I could think right. of. And I came across this dog named Charlie Waffles. Charlie Waffles was a big Labradoodle, um, about the size of a standard poodle. And he had just lost his left front leg to osteosarcoma. And he just, it just tugged at my heart. Um, and I was reading a story and I reached out to the owners and I said, look, we would love to send you a water collar to help with his rehabilitation. And because of the way his incisions were done and how high up on the shoulder they had to go, it was, it was a while um, before he was going to be able to get in the water and actually start therapy. And I said, you know what? Put the water collar on him and let him use it as a, as a headrest. Um, and that's how they introduced it to him. And he laid around in that water collar. I have pictures of him in the chair. And the next, the next video I got was of him running across the yard like he had never lost his leg and he had his water collar on and she said, <laughs> we're just keeping it on him all the time. It's still too cool to set up the pool, but you know, it kind of sent me off in a different direction because there are so many dogs out there who, you know, they're used to having all four legs, you know, and then all of a sudden one is gone. They're not like people. They don't realize that they're handicapped. They just get up and start going again. But why not give them that extra boost of confidence with, you know, being able to concentrate on swimming instead of having to concentrate on holding their head up and swimming. Right. Um, right. And, um, you know, I think I touched on this earlier. You know, we've we've got this whole new group of people that we're talking with uh, with dogs that they call nubbies who were just born without front legs. Um, and I, I guarantee you, you put a water collar on a nubby, they're going to swim. They're going to go yeah. off like a little motorboat. And um, I, we're so excited to start working with them. And uh that any kind of a handicap in the water can be less of a handicap when the dog doesn't have to think about holding their head up. They don't have to work nearly as hard. No. Keeping their head up, right? And you don't have to stand there, you know, holding on to them to hold them up. Uh, right. I see I see that a lot on, on videos where dogs will be in a tank, uh, you know, a therapy swim tank, and the you know, the person who's working with them is having to literally hold the handle on the back of a life jacket to keep them upright. You know, why, why go to that extra step, you know, put the water collar on the dog and let them, you know, let them relax and concentrate on the activity. And Kelly, with my other hand, I've got my one hand on the handle and my other hand on the, under the chin. That's just what I was going to say, Kathy. The dog, right? Um, exactly. That's not easy. Yeah, yeah and, and, well, and as a therapist, you want to be able to step back once in a while right. and look through that tank and and assess the dog. And if you're and if you're up close on top of the dog, you can't really see that. But if you can step back and look at the mechanics of the dog swimming without having to struggle to hold up their head, you're getting a better assessment of the dog. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and Kathy, you alluded earlier. You know, when dogs don't know how to swim are panicking, don't have that confidence. Panic. It's like they use their head as a fifth limb. Oh, and yeah. so they see the surface of the water as something solid because they're not familiar with it. And they will push down, you know. So even when I would have my hand under their chin, I mean, we're in a battle because I'm trying to hold their head up and they're trying to push down to leverage themselves up and out of, of the water. Right. And, you know, having the, the water collar, the heads up as a, a third hand, you know, uh, can only only be helpful. And many times, too, we have what we call comorbidities. So, you know, Kathy and I may be, uh, you know, rehabbing a dog that had knee surgery, but they also have laryngeal paralysis, which we d discussed briefly earlier. And I've been privy to so many cases, um, you know, heard tale that, you know, these dogs, again, aspirated or the veterinarian won't let them use water therapy for rehabilitation, which they could really benefit from because of the fear of causing, you know, death from aspiration, pneumonia, infection, that whole gamut of, of possibilities medically that could kill them. And so, you know, to be able to to reap the benefits in rehabilitation with 
other diagnoses that might otherwise make swimming contraindicated is just huge. Mm. I mean, the applications in my mind are just, they're endless. You can use these with dogs that are seniors, dogs with osteoarthritis, dogs that are recovering from dogs surgery. Dogs just afraid of water. I, dogs I that put are, mine on peanut when I give her a right. bath because she's so she's still, oh, still afraid, afraid of water. Afraid of water, teaching them how to swim. Um, and then, of course, with my uh, my affinity for the disabled or the impaired dog, the blind dog, uh, so it could happen so quickly that your dog could fall in the pool. It could happen in the blink of an eye. It could happen mm-hmm. so quickly. Well, um, and people, I, I want to touch on this just briefly, but we're we're working with a a, a dog water park, mm-hmm. um, and this spring we're going to launch a water collar rental program with them, so that when people, you know, the the owners are not actually allowed to get in the pool because of mm-hmm. the health department. So yeah. they're basically just turning their dogs loose in a great big gigantic pool with 50, 60, 70 other dogs. Oh my, um, God. my God. Exactly. It's, chaos. It, it's <laughs> chaos. And I, you know, and we approached them and I said, look, you know, if you did a rental program, I said, it's going to lower your liability. Um, you know, the, the likelihood that a dog is going to, you know, aspirate in the water or get, you know, dogs, mm-hmm. They play like kids in the water. They'll yeah. they'll push each other under and oh, you know, and they're biting it. They're biting it. <laughs> exactly. So let's let's have a positive experience from the moment they walk through the gate and get into right. that pool. Strap a water collar on them, and so and we can't wait for spring for that to happen. So, yeah. you know, if you're if you if you're in one of those locations in a city where you know you the dogs go to a big dog park, you know, take your own water collar and and then tell them about ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Now, Kelly and Lynn, can I? Ask ask you this i do they come in different colors and styles and patterns like because my dog's a pretty he's a pretty manly guy you know what i'm saying and like he looks really good in like teals and blues so are there are there things to are other patterns to choose from well we have three colors we have the safety orange which of course yep is is the most popular yeah and then we have a red nautical um type um which we call the red sailor and then we have a giraffe pattern oh that's for me it's very sassy (laughs) that's for me sassy now i will tell you this we don't we don't recommend giraffe patterns for open water swimming it'd be hard to see yes yes Yes, ma'am so stick with safety makes, orange if you're going to the ocean. That, the that makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect that's sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everybody knows the orange and floating in the water. That's that's important. Everybody knows that that's the signal. There's something floating. Here. There's something yes. floating out there and it's safety orange. We must yeah. avoid it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lynn asked me, you know, what what pattern I wanted. And and like you, Kathy, I originally gravitated toward the giraffe. I'm like, you know, um, you know, got to have that. But then I took a second and I thought, you know, my dogs, again, aren't natural swimmers right if they're going to get in the water it's going to be by accident and the fact this happened to me my 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 dad was out visiting we went on a little hike up in southern new hampshire had the dogs we got out to this point on these rocks and it was beautiful and we're taking in the scenery and i thought oh it's pretty safe around here and you know my dogs don't like water so you know so i took them off leash what does julep do she goes to the edge. She sees bubbles in the water <laughs> that were created by, like, the, you know, the rapids in the, the swirling water. This dog is obsessed by bubbles, you know. So I buy the little kids bubbles and, you know, blow them out in the yard, and she goes nuts. Well, that's where her mind went. So what is she? She just goes in the water. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, and I, you know, again, calling, calling, calling. Fortunately, she turned around because she was going toward a waterfall. Oh, my She goodness. could have gone out and gone down over that waterfall. <laughs> so when I really thought about it, I'm like, okay, need, I really need safety orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, and I, I think I may have told this story before um, about a young golden retriever that I rehabbed and and his owner would take him to a uh, big river out here, the Charles River and goes through Boston and and they were swimming and there's other dogs and it's a whole park and it's a thing and everything's fine. And his dog sees, uh, I think it was a swan. Uh oh. And, uh uh-huh, and he swims out, 
And he's, you know, and then the swan, you know, swims faster, of course, they're better equipped. And he swims after the swan and the swan swims away. And before he knew it, his dog's out of sight. And, you know, he's on a riverbank. It's wooded. He can't just follow the dog down the river. And so, you know, that would be a case where this dog could have kept swimming to exhaustion. Exactly. And, you know, the owner can't, you know, find him. And, and, you know, he ended up like getting in his car and driving down and and ended up retrieving the, the dog. But it was harrowing to say the least. Of course. Well, let's just say that happened again, but your dog was wearing a heads up pets water collar. You're not near in near as a panic mode. Yep. And if they've got that big flipping orange collar around you their can neck, see them. That, you, you, know, see you, can, you can see them and somebody can say, wow, there, look at that dog. And he obviously belongs to someone. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a safety traffic cone. You know, <laughs> there are some there are some things in life that are far too precious to leave to chance. And your dog's life is one of them. Absolutely. Um, So, Kelly, um, as we're wrapping up, can you let our listeners know where they can find you and Lynn? Oh, we're all over the place. We're on we're on Facebook uh, at at Heads Up Pets. It's H-E-D-Z-U-P-P-E-T-S dot com or not dot com. Heads Up Pets on Facebook. On Instagram, we're at Heads Up Pets. uh, H-E-D-Z again. Um, Our website is www.savedogsfromdrowning.com and um, we always uh, we always answer any letters that are sent to us or notes that are sent to us through our website or Facebook so if you have questions reach out to us um, we will give you um, the customer just customer service that you deserve so reach out to us if you have questions we'd love to answer them for you save dogs from drowning.com very simple to remember i know we have a lot of people who listen who are rehabilitators um this is a great thing for your practice uh and you should check out their website and i think applications within the rehab setting um that will make things safer and easier for you and for your patient and don't forget to use your discount code petpod22 short for petability podcast to get your 10% discount when ordering your heads up water collar. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys. This was so fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook or on Instagram at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please go to enableyourpet.com. Thank you, and please tune in next time.